What's up? Welcome back to another Watch Me Teach. If you're new here, my name is Taylor and I teach third grade in Central California. Today, we are in unit five, week two of Wonders McGraw-Hill. That means we're working on inflectional endings in spelling. We are reading Bravo Tavo, still working on summary. So following that, somebody wanted but so then, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, go back and watch my last Watch Me Teach video, episode 14, I believe, where I break that down, explain that, and share the resource that I used. I feel like this group got the summary really well, so we are mostly just kind of verbally going over the summary, but I'm going to introduce a syntactic map to help us create more elongated, better sentences. That was a really good sentence itself. <laughs> but yeah, it's gonna be my first time showing them, so wish me luck. Math, we are doing some last minute review questions for that chapter five test, wrapping up the chapter five test, and hopefully having time to go outside. Fingers crossed, I'm not sure, because we're also testing on fluency, because report cards, the quarter ends Friday. So I'm just trying to wrap up stuff too. But yeah, okay, I'm going to set you down, and let's get started. Right? 
Yes. So then, like the boy's shoes, right? He says the soles of his shoes and the canvas were completely split. He had to duct tape them around. Yeah. Right? So he's saying, uh, the sentence says, the tape held the sole to what remained of the canvas top. So this isn't even all here. It's kind of in little pieces, but he's taking it together. And then discouraged. What does discouraged mean? Discourage. Like, courage. not courage. Not courage, which means what? Courage means you don't believe in yourself. You don't really believe courage. in yourself. So he finally went and proved to the mayor. Yes. See? It's working, and then he finally gets to play basketball again because of shoes, and he sees his dad sitting next to the mayor. Players 
practice for the game. And you can pick any one I, of these. I know what to ask. Um, Hold on, let me have Giovanni because he hasn't participated yet. Giovanni, which word do you want to use? Above, below, in front of, or next to? Next to. Okay. So we're looking about the basketball players. The basketball players practice for the game next to what? Okay, what else are they next to? Where are they? What's over here? Because what is Tombo looking at? It's like mountains, it looks like they're okay. mountains. Okay, so we're going to say the basketball players were practicing for the game. Next to the Next to? What? Yes. Okay, now that we use next to, we're going to choose a different preposition. What do you think? Above, below, or in front of? I'm not sure which one to choose. Can well, you? let's think of this. Because I know what I'm gonna say, but I don't what know. What would you like to say? Um, the basketball court. Mm -hmm. So then that would be above. Instead I mean, of above, we're gonna switch it to what? They're playing in the basketball. Well, inside no. the basketball court. No. Your books right now are what? Inside. Are they inside your desk? Yes. No, they're outside. 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 they are They were below Tavo or in front of Tavo? Look where they're playing. They're playing basketball. In front of Tavo. In front of Tavo. Also, under above because he's like on top of something. Well, Tavo is above basketball players. Right? The basketball players, they're here. They're playing in front of They're playing below. Okay, let's put that together for our sentence. We can start with any of these. Okay? Right now, we've only done this one. So we can either start with this or end with this. The only thing is that these three have to stay together. Okay, these three will always go together. Let's start with where. You can pick any one of these. It could be on the basketball court, court. then do below. In front of Tavo or next to the mountain. Okay, so we're going to start this. You're going to follow my finger, but read the sentence, right? In front of Tavo, the basketball players were practicing for the game. Are we going to need more than one? Yeah. The basketball players were playing. And we're going to start with this. So, pretty good. In front of Tavo, the basketball players were practicing for the game. Good one. Christian, want to pick someone to read the sentence? Yeah, pick another where. Which one of those two? Next to the mountains. This time, we're going to plug the where in at the end of the sentence. So we're going to start with our triangle and then end there. Ready? Go. The basketball players were practicing for the game. No, we're just doing one. We're practicing for the game. There we go. Let's add another one. So this is the preposition, but this is more of the time. So when, we're gonna use words like during, before, after, or between. Eva, which one do you wanna use? We're talking about the time during, the time of this photo. Okay, during. Now, um, now since we're asked, since we're trying to fill in the when, I'm gonna ask this one question first. When did the basketball players practice for the game? During what? I know. Okay, so during sunset. Okay, let's do, what's another one? Let's go to before. The basketball players were practicing for the game before. The basketball team. 
But the most of time on the Yes, the only thing is we are repeating a lot. What would we call a big, big game? Uh, international game? That's what international game. It's the final game. It is the... Championship game. Cha well, let's just say championship. That way, championship. the practicing for the game before the championship game, see how it repeats. So we can just say before the championship. Nice, okay. We can use after. What word would we use after? We're just looking at this picture. We can say after, but after, what do you normally do with your family before sunset? Oh, eat lunch, eat dinner. So, we could say the basketball players were practicing for the game after dinner. I'm going to eat dinner with my family because I can eat it whenever I really want. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, guys. Okay, so now let's create our sentence. Okay, so I'm going to say on the basketball court, the basketball players were practicing. That, that's too much basketball. So what could I say instead? In the basketball court, the players, the players were yeah. practicing for the game during sunset. Okay. Okay. Or switch around. I can say during sunset, the basketball players were practicing for the game on the court. On the court. See how we can arrange them any way we want, as long as those triangle ones stay together. Can be our last one before we go to recess. You know that the two of the mountains, the basketball players, and no more. Oh, 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 that's right, I forgot the word. Ready? Go. Samantha made this multiplication model. Complete the equation that represents the model. Okay, what are these called when we see these little quick things? Those are tens. They are tens. So, how many uh, how many groups do we have? You have ten three. Of three. Hmm? So we have ten. 20, 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. Hold on. 10, 20, 30. Because see how they're separated? Yep. Yeah. So, 10, 20, 30. Hold 10, 20, 30. on. So, this is one group. This is another one. Two, this, three. So, how many groups we have? That's three. How many are in each group? 10, 20, 30. 10, 20, 30. How many is in this group? 30, 30, 30. So three times 30, or 30 times three. Now to solve that, what do we do? 90. If I have three times 30, how do I solve that? Chop, no, chop 30, chop 30. Chop it. And three times three is nine. And just put the zero and that's nine. Awesome, there we go. You need to know how to make the equation, okay? So see how they're big, they're separated. Automatically look at the groups. I see one, two, three groups. How many is in each group? 10, 20, 30. So there's three tenths, so it's 30. So three groups times the 30. That's the equation that I want, that okay? Is right. Okay, next one. A printer prints newsletters for many groups every month. Oh, Which sure. group uses the greatest number of pieces of paper. Okay, so here's my group. The number of pieces of paper in the newsletter, the number of copies that are printed. So just because it has more pages doesn't mean it gets printed a lot. So we need to actually solve for these. Okay, so let's do. So this is basically saying five, times 70. What's five times 70? I'm gonna chop it. What's seven times five? Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, oh. 40. Not two. 30. 5. 35. 15. 20, 40. 25. 40. 30. Keep. 35. 35. We can't. Guess. Do, yeah, we're not guessing. We're doing it. Okay, so show me 7. Because we're multiplying by 7. And 5. We're by 5. That's 30. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Okay, so I'm writing 35. Then I'm bringing that zero. Okay, next one. Six times 80, I'm gonna chop that with eight times six. If we don't know, this is what we do. Eight circles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six lines. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, look, if we number them, stop guessing random numbers. Okay, do I see a five? Yes, so you have The to five go. unlocks the cheat code so we can jump ahead. We can only do it this one time and we're counting by fives. Five, Ready? Ten, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Now we only need to count it one more time. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. So this one, hold on, 48. Uh, zero. Next one. So you have to actually solve all of these. You're not looking at who has the bigger number in these places. Okay? Now it's asking which one has the greatest number. So which one of these is the greatest? Yes, I see 480 is the biggest and that is my book lovers club. A store has 30 boxes of melons. What's important? There is 30 boxes. 30 um, boxes of melons. Thank you, and you already got each. Each box holds four bags. So what else is important? Four bags and two. Holds four bags. Holds four bags. Each bag holds two melons. Whoa, what's the total number? So 30. Times four times two. Oh, now I got it. When we have all multiplication, yes, all of its multiplication. I think. Okay, I we're gonna add parentheses. This is associative property because two friends are gonna hang out at a time. Who do you want to hang out? Um, I want thirty and four. You want thirty and forty? Thirty and four to hang out? Did you say thirty and I did. <laughs> okay, thirty and four. Okay. Those can hang out. What's 30 times 4? 30 times 4 equals 120. How do I solve it? What's the total now? 30 times 4. Now what? Now you have to do 3 times 4, and that's 12. 12? That's what I'm trying to do. 120. Okay. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. That's what I'm trying to do. So now we're doing 120 times 2, which is fine. Because all times two, that means we just need two of them. So I can do I 120 it. plus 120. What's 240. 120? 240. Zero, four, two. Yes, 240. Okay? If you want other people to hang out, that's fine too. We could do 30. We had times the four times the two. Let's say I want the four and the two to hang out. What's four times two? Four times two is eight. Eight. And now I have 30 times eight. What is 30 times eight? 30 times eight, you flip the 30. Chop the 30. Thank you, what was it? Three times eight is 24, add the zero. We still have 240. Okay, so we're just multiplying all of them. But put your parentheses, and remember, parentheses always go first. Okay, so we solve that one, and then times the other one. And it's not as crazy as it seems. We're playing shadow tag. Raise your hand if you play shadow tag. But you know how we can't touch each other? Oh, we're doing it with the shadows! We're tagging our shadows. Okay, I'm gonna need help. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay, so it is the end of the day. Just clicked on my distance learning group. We are done at 2 today, and I get to leave at 2.45. In the meantime, I'm going to make an anchor chart to help us with the inflectional endings because we're having a little hard time with that. So, I'm going to make a simple anchor chart, and then we'll get at it. Okay, we are done. Was not going for perfection here. Was going for quick, I mean like cute enough, you know, but really not the focus. I'm probably not gonna laminate this one. Probably just gonna remake a perfect version at some point to laminate and keep, but this, this ain't it. <laughs> okay, oh, and while I was making this, I don't know why my kiddo didn't use my secret knot, but she dropped off a picture. I recently found out she's an artist. Ah, so cool. I wish I could draw this good. Amazing. All right, let's put this up real quick. Alrighty guys, that is it for today. Thank you for joining me on another Watch Me Teach. If that's the video, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you next week. Bye guys.